In this video, I'm going to talk about the SIPOC diagram. The SIPOC diagram is a tool that is usually used in the defined phase of a Six Sigma or Lean Six Sigma project, but it can also be used to analyze and understand the different processes within a work system. SIPOC is an acronym for Supplier, Input, Process, Output, and Customer. The purpose of the SIPOC diagram is to identify the overall processes within a work system and provide us with an overall perspective. Uh, it is also great uh, for supporting the definition, structuring, and scoping of complex work systems. And it also gives us the possibility to highlight problem or weaknesses in the processes within the work system. The SIPOC diagram will help us answering questions such as, what is the start and end point of the work system? So basically, what is the scope of the work system? What are the essential steps within the work system? What are the main inputs and outputs? Who are the key customers, internal and external? Who are the key suppliers? And who are, uh, what are the customer demands? In the supplier column of the SIPOC diagram, here we identify the different suppliers of the inputs into the different processes within the work system. This could be persons, departments, machine, processes, uh, internal or external customers, uh, etc. In the input part, we identify the required inputs for each process step, material, data, workforce, knowledge, uh, information, etc. In the process column, we identify the different processes within the work system from the beginning to the end. In the output, we identify the expected output of each process steps, product, yield, information, service, knowledge, uh, material, etc. And then at the last part, we have the customer. Here we identify who are the different customer for each output. And this could be the end user, our colleagues, uh, other departments, uh, customers, or maybe um, another business, etc. There are many ways of approaching the SIPOC diagram, but the general rule is to always start with the processes. Try to identify the process steps within the work system from the beginning to the end. And then after that, it's basically a preference of which column you take here after. The way I prefer to do it is to, again, start with the processes, identify the outputs of each process step, identify the customer of each output, identify the inputs for each process step, and then identify the suppliers. And there is a general rule that says try to limit the process steps to maximum seven. And this is to keep the overall perspective and not to get into much detail. Uh, because the SIPOC is not intended to go into details. It's basically there, as mentioned earlier, to give you a per perspective, an overall perspective of how things are kind of related to each other. Well, let's try to use the SIPOC with a simple example that most of us are probably familiar with, a dining experience at a restaurant. And we're going to try to look at it from the restaurant's perspective. So again, we start with the process and Keep in mind that we are looking at the main processes and we don't want to get into much detail. So in this case, the process would be the customer is arriving at the restaurant. They're assigned to a table. They order some food. They eat the food. They pay their bills and they leave the restaurant. And these are the process steps. So we start with identifying the processes. And the next step would then be to look at the outputs. What are the outputs? And in this case, we can see that when the customer is arriving at the restaurant, there isn't necessarily an output. In this case, there is no output. So we're just gonna skip that one. And then when the customer is assigned to a table, then you're gonna have the output would be that a table would be occupied. And when the customer is ordering a food, is some food, then the output of that would be a written order something that the waiter has written on a piece of paper. And then when the customer has eaten their food, then you probably were gonna have some dirty tableware. And we're gonna continue that way. And then we're gonna do, again, the same thing. As we said, we said process, output, customer, input, and then we're gonna have suppliers. And you can see I have limited to six process steps in this case. 
Let's look at it again. So we have arriving at the restaurant and then we have, there's no suppliers input, output or customers. This is just the process step. And then the next step was uh, get it assigned to a table. And here the supplier is the, is the waiter. The input is the table request. The process is the table assigned. Uh, the output is uh, occupied table and the customer is the restaurant guest because these, they are the one who are receiving the table. They get to sit at the table. And then uh, step number three is the supplier is the restaurant guest. The input is a verbal order uh, because the guest is given an order uh, verbally. And then the process is ordering the food. The output is uh, a written order and the customer is the waiter or the chef, which way you want to look at it. And this is the way you continue down. And this is a great example uh, to showcase uh, the SIPOC diagram. I'm going to finish this video by giving you some facilitation tips. And the first one would be always use a team approach if possible. And this is because there can be many different entities, many different departments involved. And if you are working with others, they can probably provide you with some inputs that uh, you probably didn't think of. So try to use a team approach. And then uh, as we saw before, then an output does not necessarily need to have an input. And there can be more than one relationship for process, input, and outputs. There can be multiple customers and suppliers feeding the same step. And then at the end, I'm going to repeat this, try to limit the process steps to a maximum of seven steps. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you have learned something. If there is any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Give it a like. And give a subscription to the channel for more videos like this.